This is the best van build ever because we get a swing set. <laughs> Feels like I come here every day shopping for things between the stores. Oh my gosh. Hopefully I got the right stuff in my basket. Parts, 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 bolts, piping, got it all. After spending all of week one working on insulation, we were super excited to swing into the variety of next tasks that week two had in store, which started with Drew laying out our floor. Oh. It's really hot in here. I just got done vacuuming the whole van. I had to clean this thing up. Today, I'm going to be installing the flooring. That's gonna be the next step. There'll be no seams where we walk the most because the couch comes out 27 inches off the back wall and it'll end up about right there. We had considered nearly every type of flooring, but in the end, we decided to go all out with luxury vinyl. Between being a mere 3 eighths of an inch thick, 100% waterproof, and the convenient tongue and groove installation, plus the fact that our tiny home only needed 48 square feet, it was basically the best choice we could find. <laughs> Despite the mess, the floor looks amazing. I actually haven't seen it in person. Wow, you did a really nice job. This floor is awesome, by the way. It's like all waterproof and amazing. With the flooring complete, we could then move on to start building the boxes above the wheel wells using two by twos and half inch ply. Because the bulk of our build and lumber would be going on the driver's side of our van, we decided to balance out the weight by securing our 40 gallon water tank above the wheel well on the passenger's side and creating a less cumbersome power bank area on the other. Oh, that's been a lot of work. Just built my second wheel box. Oh yeah. I felt like this was a good use of space. The bed platform will be up here and we have a big area where I'm gonna put the inverter, uh, some of our other electronic devices that we need in here. Probably route the solar down from up here into this bank area and this will be all of our extra. I'm thinking we're gonna need like 320 amp hours. Right now we have three at 270. Ooh, I might actually add another 100 to that. Before diving into electrical, solar, and wiring, we wanted to start laying the groundwork for our bed which we decided to build on a raised platform in the back. We had lived with this kind of setup our first year of van life when we traveled around the U.S., and we remembered how incredibly useful having the garage space was, especially when it came to storing our adventure gear and bikes. To be honest, though, it was hard not to go with the futon-style bed that we had loved so much while living in the Howler for the past three years in Europe. We had gotten so used to sleeping with the slider door open next to the sea and enjoying the sunrise, breakfast, and all the views from bed. Good morning. <laughs> we got the terrace. The terrace. Overlooking the village onto the Cape Benedict Casbah and ruins where they filmed a bunch of famous movies. And, and in celebration, we watched Gladiator last night. But as much as we loved it, it just wasn't the most practical choice for us. Between having to make and unmake the bed every day, the bed taking up nearly our entire van, and the fact that I like to go to sleep and wake up early while Drew is quite the opposite, doing the raised platform in the back just made more room for a bit more comfort and space moving forward. This might just be my favorite job to date. Look at these bed frames down here. I got them from the Restore store for Habitat for Humanity, where people donate their goods. I picked up three sets of twin size bed frames and I gotta cut off the legs and the joining centers because where I'm gonna put them is right across here. There'll be 36 inches of clearance. We can have our bikes, all of our gear, our climbing gear, my kiting gear. And then where the floor finish is here, that's where the bed will begin. So. The bed dimensions will be 70 almost across by 70 that way. Uh, we might make some space for cabinetry and like some book storage on the sides, but we'll see. Got the grinder out here. This thing really crushes it.
We got the two pieces for the bed, two by fours cut. They're gonna run 67 inches lengthwise of the van. And I got these marked right here. I screwed the boards together so that way I can't make any errors on my cut. And then my framework will go into these grooves. It'll sit oh so nicely. Great. Bed frames in. This was the end of last night that we didn't get around to showing you. With Drew working hard on the bed frame, I was busy sprucing up the incredible copper sink we found in our workshop. Hey babe. Yeah? Hey, you know the sink we have in there? Yeah. Uh, you want to pick up some cleaner for that? Yeah, I was gonna Google what you do to clean copper. Yeah, because I think we should try to clean that thing up if we're really even considering using it. And let's see what happens. Look at how pretty. It's very shiny. It's like the sun. I hope it's big enough for dishes. That's my concern. Well, if we have a high enough faucet it creates a huge space for dishes like this you get like all that something like that yeah before we get to the most exciting addition here's a collection of the other random things and events that week two had in store including our new dometic oven pizza size what do you think oh yeah Perfect. Ooh. is this our heater or a water, heater? water heater oh my gosh we're gonna have hot water. Hot showers. And now we have our furring strips and our ceiling will stay like this until we get to San Diego to work with SD Urban Timber because yeah our, our wood will just get fastened right on here. Wow. Where are you? Where are you? Come find me. Oh. I have a 6,000 okay. pound van sitting on top of me. What are you doing under I'm there? To sort out the power that goes from the starter and alternator to our starter battery and auxiliary battery. It's very snug. You're spooning. Good thing I'm not claustrophobic. You're it's snuggling. Like I'm a, a van underside pug. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Turkey cooked on the grill. And we were grateful to be able to take a break and celebrate Thanksgiving with our families. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. This was something we had only ever seen a version of once in Portugal before. And we honestly hadn't even really discussed how we would put it in our van. Look what I built for you, babes. You look so happy up there. I used my climbing quick draws mounted on a lead galvanized pipe. This is the coolest. I think that's going to be our new favorite spot in the van. And that's a wrap. We hope you've enjoyed watching week two of our van build. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you can join us again next week for all the fun loving learning that week three has in store. That's uh, donkeys? What are these called? <laughs> Sawhorses. <laughs> We've also gone ahead and put links to some of the items mentioned in this video for you below. Oh, and if you want to keep up to date with our daily adventures and more, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Mr. and Mrs. Adventure. We love sharing this unpredictable journey with you. Until next time. <laughs>